Hi folks, this video is on hazard profiling. Now when we're thinking about our tectonic hazards, we need to think about a way of comparing them. Because earthquakes, volcanoes and tsunami, they're very different to each other. Um, and we can use a series of different factors to create a profile of hazard. Um, hence the idea of the hazard profile. And we look at several factors, weigh them all up, um, to give us an idea of what kind of hazard we're looking at. It'll give us some idea about which ones are the most destructive, uh, but also a bit more of a subtle trend about what's actually happening when these hazards occur. So when we're looking at a hazard profile, we're looking at six key factors. Magnitude, speed of onset, so how quickly it comes about, duration, how long, aerial extent, how big an area is being affected, so the extent of an area being affected, spatial predictability, so can it be predicted where it's going to be in space, as in in the world, not in space, and how frequently it happens. And we profile it almost like it's a set of sliders. So here we've got high magnitude down to low magnitude, very quick speed of onset, the lightning bolt there, down to slow speed of onset, long duration of many days, the calendar, down to seconds or minutes, large area being affected down to small area, random um, spatial occurrence, which you can't pick it out, as opposed to very pinpoint exact, and very, very frequent, down to not frequent at all. So you can sort of set a position on all these sliders uh, for each of these factors. If you look at page 20, you will see an example of a pair of hazard profiles, which I'm going to map out for you to show you how you would do that. So what I've done is I have, using uh, the same example as on page 20 in the textbook, I've sort of put the sliders on for the red uh, convergent boundary. And blue for a uh, conservative or a divergent map boundary. Conservative or divergent there. Now, so move the sliders along if you like. These are all of our sort of worse end. These are all of our sort of better end. So, what we do now is link them up. And this gives you a hazard profile and it allows you to look at okay, maybe you've got these earthquakes at these boundaries which are. Uh, the earthquakes are bigger for a convergent boundary, but they have a similar speed of onset, similar duration, different frequency. We can also think of it in terms of, well, earthquakes in general appear to have a pretty fast speed of onset, pretty short duration, pretty similar aerial extent, but it's the frequency and the magnitude that change. And if you looked at volcanoes and tsunami, you could compare them and you could think about um, how different populations would be more vulnerable to different types of hazards. Now I've starred magnitude because I want to just go into that a little bit further by looking at some of the scales of magnitude that we use when we're thinking about hazard profiling. So in terms of the scales that we use for magnitude for tectonic events, we are looking at the Richter scale, the modified Mercalli scale, the MMS scale, and the BEI. The Richter scale is the one uh, that you're probably most familiar with. It is an earthquake scale and it measures the height or amplitude of the, the waves 
the earthquake waves, the S waves. Uh, check out previous videos if you don't know what an S wave is. So it measures the height of the S wave. And the Richter scale works on the basis that as you go up, the waves uh, get 10 times higher. So between 1 and 2, the waves get 10 times higher. Between 2 and 3, the waves get 10 times higher again. So it's sort of like that's 10 times higher. 1 to 3 is 10 times 10 higher. So it's 100 times higher. It's a logarithmic scale. So basically you go 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, so on. The modified Mercalli scale, rather than being a mathematical scale, like measuring the height of waves, um, is more of a relative scale. It's more like the Beaufort scale. It is 1 to 12, and it's based on um, how much shaking, how much movement you perceive. So it's about what you see. So if you look out the window and you see all the shaking, it'll get a higher Mercalli rating. 1 to 12 is a linear scale, so 1, 2, 3, you're sort of going up in a line, you're not going up by 1, 10, 100. You're going 2 is twice as big as 1, 4 is twice as big as 2. However, it's subjective, so it has its problems. It's not mathematical. The MMS, or Moment Magnitude Scale, is the one that tends to be used by the USGS. It's a very modern scale, and it's like the, um, the new version of the Richter scale. Both are still used. The Richter is still used. But the Richter, which was developed in the 1930s, measures the height of waves. The MMS, Moment Magnitude Scale, measures energy. So moment is uh, the energy that's being released by an earthquake. These three are all earthquake scales, by the way, just so you know. Again, it's a logarithmic scale. So uh, you've got one, you've got two, you've got three. But actually, two is 32 times more energy than one. Three is 32 times more energy than two. So you're going up like that. Why 32 times the amount of energy? Hard to say, but that's how the, uh, the scientists have worked it out. So that's what you need to know. It goes up in sort of times 32, times 32, times 32. So that's energy, that's what you see, that's what you perceive, and that is the height of the S wave. For volcanoes, we've got the VEI, or the Volcanic Explosivity Index i.e. how big an explosion you get. So you go from little volcano explosion to big explosions. And this again is a logarithmic scale. It goes 1, 10, 100, 1000. So it goes up by massive orders. Look at page uh, 19 if you're unsure about any of these. In terms of tsunamis, we measure them by height. So it's wave height, and then just working it out from the maximum that's ever occurred. But if you're comparing these to hazard profiles, go from um, basically the lowest possible to the highest possible, and try to compare them based on that. The only one that doesn't really fit is the Macaulay, uh, because it's more subjective, and it's a linear scale rather than logarithmic, but you can still make it fit. So any questions about this, uh, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching.